God calls each of us to be servant leaders. Well, what does that mean? And more importantly, how can we be the type of leader that God wants us to be in our businesses? You may be imitating the way others are doing business in your own business right now. Why not? It's working for them, right? Well, in this video, what I want to do is I want to do some contrasting. We'll look at what the secular world considers a leader, and we'll look at what God says is a leader. You'll get a chance to check your heart, check your actions, to see what type of leader you are actually being in your business. You know, God wants you to be set apart, and that means that you need to be showing up in your business, prioritizing God, His way to be a leader. Join me. Hey there, wise woman, this is Deneen TV, your Christian business growth strategist and clarity coach, really helping you to connect your faith and your business so that you can have the God-centered business that serves him while serving your clients. Make sure that you have subscribed to the channel if you haven't already, and let's get into this topic right away. Okay. I know you know, and you've probably seen that there are so many books that have been written about servant leadership, leading like Jesus, or however way you want to say it. You may have even read some of these books, but what is servant leadership? Well, it's actually a philosophy in which the goal of the leader is to serve the team or to serve your clients, because many of you probably don't have a team. It means that the leader shares the power, puts the needs of the team or the clients first, and helps each person develop and perform at their best. In contrast, I said we were going to be doing some contrasting. In contrast, traditional leadership in business really focuses on the goals of the company, the organization to thrive, that the whole thing thrives, that the whole thing without really considering the individuals inside of it. Yes, a servant leader is people focused. And isn't that what God really requires of us or wants us to be is people focused, focused on those people in our sphere of influence that we get to work with, we get to see, we get to be around. So what I want to do is we're going to go through five different contrasts of traditional or secular business leaders versus servant leaders in business. So this is for you to give yourself that checkup that I talked about and how you are really approaching your business and see where there may be room for improvement for you. Okay, so just a note here before we get started. I know that there are many companies that are using servant leadership in their business right now in the world because they've realized the value of actually valuing their employees or having great customer service. As believers, we are called to treat people in a very specific way, and it's not for our own gain, as many companies might be trying to use it for, but it is for their gain, for the people that we are working with. So I may use these terms interchangeably between secular and traditional, so don't get confused. It's really about the attitude that the person has, or the company has, or the business has, or you have, and not the actual term. So let's look at these five areas. Where is your focus? Number one, obtaining the rank of leader versus the opportunity to serve. Now, I know that you have your own business, so you're already a leader, the leader of your business, right? But let me ask you this. Is it more important for you to let everyone know that you have the LLC or that you're the CEO, the founder of your business? Or do you use a more functional title? what you actually do for others when you describe your business. So here's the difference. I can say to you in my functional title, I am a Christian business growth strategist and clarity coach. Great, right? If I tell you that I am the CEO of Grow From Your Overflow LLC, that is more of 
the overall important one, right? So which one actually tells you what I do for others? The first one, of course. So think about it. How are you introducing yourself online and offline? What's the first thing you want others to know about you and who you are in your business? You know, God has given you the ability to lead others in a specific way, to serve them so that they can get their problems solved. It really is a gift to serve others in this way. I love what Romans 12, 8 says. It says, if your gift is to encourage, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the risk responsibility seriously. And if you have the gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. You know, he gave you your business so that you could lead well. So how's your attitude here? Are you seeing people as an opportunity to serve or a number to add to your influence and your revenue? Okay, we're on to number Two, using power and control to drive perfection versus sharing power and control to drive engagement. So this comes down to, are you talking at people to show them how amazing you are? And, and, or are you actually conversing with them to really know how to meet their needs? Even if you don't have a team yet, you could be alienating people by showing up as the know-it-all. Yes, I know it is important to be seen as an expert in your space, but not at the cost of turning off those that God has called you to serve. So this could mean you could be doing things in a way that seems to those who are watching that it is something that they can never achieve not good. You have this, what we call the Instagram version of your business, you know, that carefully curated, perfect business. And you're not really being honest about what is really going on. Now, I'm not saying that everyone needs to know all your problems, but they need to know that you are real. That's the difference of sharing power and control. You are not afraid of letting your guard down, admitting that you've made mistakes and letting others see things that they can relate to because, you know, we're all really going through the same thing. That's when the engagement happens. That's where working together really pays off for everyone, those that you are influencing and yourself. In Galatians 5, 25 and 26, Paul says this, Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. You know, God wants us to share what we have learned from the experiences that he's actually brought us through. Where is the control and power pointing in your life? Is it driving you toward perfection or towards engagement? Number three, measuring success through productivity and results or measuring success through growth and development. Now, one of the things that has been truly eye-opening not only for me, but also for my clients, is the satisfaction that is felt when you are doing what God wants you to do. Really, God is using your business to transform you, to grow you into the person that he wants you to be. And this means that not everything you do is actually going to have the results that you expected, but, but it will have the perfect result. Does that surprise you? The secular view of success in business is, of course, making lots and lots of money. It is the hustle culture. It is working toward your business goals at the expense of everything else. That is success in the world's eyes, in the secular view. 
in God's economy, he wants to not only develop you to have more patience, more endurance, more self-control, he has called you to help others grow and develop into who he has called them to be. I love that God is growing me through my business and I love that I get to help others grow too. Imagine, imagine the impact that you can have when you view your success in watching the people that you are helping get their ahas, move forward from the place that they're stuck and thrive on their own. Now, I'm not saying that you will not have to work hard in your business because you will. I am saying you will succeed that the business will succeed in ways that you have never thought of before. Proverbs 12, 24 tells us, work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and become a slave. God has given you the privilege to see success in the good you are doing for others. Recognize it. So what is your mindset toward success? Does it center around staying busy and knocking out all those goals? Or does it focus on growing yourself and others? What are you achieving through your business? Okay, number four, speaking versus listening. Do you have all the answers? Now, there's really not a problem being the one that others seek out because of your knowledge. But is it super important to you that you have all the answers? When we hear ourselves talking more than we hear others' voices, we need to kind of reassess what's going on here. I came to my business knowing what I wanted to give the world. I knew what every Christian woman entrepreneur needed and they were gonna get it. The problem, I never asked what they wanted. I took my idea, I wrote my program, I created my website, and I waited. Nothing happened. I was talking a lot. I wasn't listening. Listening means finding out what it is those you are called to serve really want. Finding out the problem that you can help them solve. Being in the conversation with them to know where they are, and actually where they want to go. This holds true for your existing clients as well. Continue listening to their needs and use these cues as your prompts for creating new content, for creating new resources. Your ideas are amazing, but if you are just doing the talk, talk, talking, everyone else will stop listening, listening, listening. James 119 spells this out beautifully. It says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. My advice, bring them into your world with what they want, and then give them what they need. They will think you are amazing. We do have two ears, and one mouth. And though the tongue is the strongest muscle in the body, we are able to tame it. So give yourself an audit. This is my advice. Are you talking and listening in proportion to your biology, God's design of you? Number five, believing it is all about you versus understanding it is all about them. In today's world, The word narcissist is very common. How can it be avoided when the secular worldview, as Natasha Crane sums it up, is this. Feelings are the ultimate guide. Happiness is the ultimate goal. Judging is the ultimate sin. And God is the ultimate guess. The focus of the world is that we are only out for each one of us individually. When you are leading your business just so it will make you happy or give you money and let you speak your truth, it is not for the sake of truly helping others. God says that is wrong. Yes, 
you are in business to make money. That's what business is about. I'm not denying that. Business is about making money, but it has been proven that making money doesn't buy happiness. Now, it may make some things easier, yes, but it is not the source of satisfaction in a life well lived. Your business needs to focus on who you are serving and how you are serving them. Does your business really look like the me show or are you thinking and giving value first? 1 Timothy 5, 23 to 25 says this, Remember, the sins of some people are obvious, leading them to certain judgment. But there are others whose sins will not be revealed until later. In the same way, the good deeds of some people are obvious, and the good deeds done in secret will someday come to light. You can't hide your intentions from God. He wants you to lead with the W-I-F-T, the what's in it for them kind of attitude. Your business is not for you to show off all you know. It is for you to serve those God has called you to serve. Look at your latest posts. Who are they focused on? Are they focused on your expertise and how amazing you are? Or are they focused on what you can do to help others solve their problem and be their best selves? I also love, 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 love when the research lines up with the Bible. (laughs) There is an enormous amount of evidence to back up the effects of servant leadership. These types of leaders, they have vision. They're honest. They live in integrity. They model behavior. They are pioneers and they empower others. They are also good communicators and they're very competent. They understand stewardship. They can teach. They're able to delegate and they have influence. We know all of these qualities are part of what God calls us to be because he has called you and me to be in business. And he's the one who equips us to lead well. We get to share his goodness with others via our businesses. You know, Jesus said this the best. And I love the the Luke 22, 25 to 27. And it's in some other of the gospels as well. It says, in this world, the kings and great men lord it over their people, yet they are called friends of the people. But you, among you, it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank and the leader should be like a servant. Who is more important, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here, not in God's economy. For I am, I, Jesus, am among you as one who serves. How are you showing up as a leader? Let me know down in the comments if something kind of pricked your heart. You had an aha in your mind. God calls us to be set apart to do things differently in our businesses. God's way to be a leader means being a servant leader. Now, if you're thinking, how do I become the leader that God wants me to be? Then I invite you to have a chat with me. Let's discover how you can have the God-centered business that God designed for you. Find the satisfaction that comes from being in his will and follow his direction for your business. I'll put that link down in the description so that you and I can have that chat. Make your appointment today. Thanks so much for listening. Make sure to like this video, comment about what happened for you when you listened, and don't forget to subscribe. This is Deneen TV. Have a great rest of your day, and as always, be filled to overflowing. Mm-hmm.